The broadcast of the Minneapolis Executive Committee will now begin. Welcome to the regularly scheduled Executive Committee meeting. The date is June 17th, 2020. I'm Jacob Fry and I'm the chair of this committee. Uh, as we begin, I'll note for the record that this meeting has remote participation by committee members and city staff as authorized under Minnesota statute section 13D.021 uh, due to the declared local public health emergency. And at this time, I'll ask the clerk to call the roll so we can verify a quorum for the meeting. Council Member Gordon. Here. Council Member Johnson. Here. Council Vice President Jenkins. Here. Council President Bender. Here. Mayor Fry. Here. There are five members present. Let the record reflect that we have a quorum. Uh, the agenda for today's meeting is before us. We've got four items on the agenda today, two which are slated uh, to be discussed during a closed session. We will begin with item number one, which is my nomination to reappoint John Friedel as the fire department chief for a two-year term. I move to approve this nomination and to refer it to the city council for the setting of a public hearing. Uh, and and I'll, I'll open it up to discussion in a minute, but I wanted to just give some additional clarification uh, following the, the motion itself. Um, so Chief Friedel has served Minneapolis for now 41 years. Uh, and in the short time that I've had the opportunity to work with him, I've seen him lead the city through some very challenging times from the fire over at Cedar Riverside to the Drake fire right on Christmas Day uh, to managing through significant issues during COVID-19, including an opioid crisis. Uh, and then most recently, of course, the, the unrest our city saw following the murder of, of George Floyd. Uh, and I'm bringing this nomination forward today um, and asking for your support to continue to, to allow Chief Friedel to lead his work. But I also want to recognize that the chief and I also recognize the need for planning uh, for longer term development in this department. And so Chief Friedel uh, has agreed to continue to serve through the transition of a new chief within the next six to nine months or so. So by the end of this year, uh, and it is my understanding that our charter posed uh, only two options for how to move this forward, given the time frames, either nominate the chief for a temporary period that would allow only for um, 60 to 90 days or so of service or a traditional reappointment. And the second option allows us flexibility to find a successor while maintaining some stability during a challenging time in our city. I want to be clear that I have great faith in the chief and Chief Friedel to lead us now and through this transition. Uh, I wanted to be sure that we had uh, someone that had ex quite a bit of experience that was guiding us through this crisis. And as we re as we um, as we come up from this crisis, we're going to find uh, a way to uh, find a proper transition. But greatly appreciate the chief and uh, uh, happy to open it to any additional discussion here. I'm happy to second this if that's required. Thank you, council member. Any further discussion? Um, yeah, thank you, Mayor, for this um, reappointment um, and for the context of a transitionary period. I just want to take this opportunity to publicly thank um, Chief Friedel for um, his long term dedicated commitment to the city and to the residents of Minneapolis. Um, as you noted, uh, many, many challenging uh, situations in just recent years, um, but there was also a significant uh, first responder response that I know Chief Friedel was in, involved with um, when the I-35W bridge collapsed and um, and all of the other significant events that you've named um, and including just up until last night when you know there were multiple fires on on both sides of town so um just thank you chief for your um long-term um, dedication and commitment to the city of minneapolis thank you council vice president uh, any further discussion on this item? 
Mayor, I'll jump in too and just also thank the chief for all of his service. And in addition to the specific incidents and the leadership in um, you know, fire safety that others have talked about, the chief has just been an incredible community leader in our city and someone who's been very dedicated to diversifying our workforce, even starting with you know, fourth graders from Whittier Elementary School and other kids across our city recruiting uh, from a very young age uh, kids into public service and really, I think, inspiring young people in Minneapolis to see themselves as part of our city in so many ways. Um, and really thinking through strategically the future of our public safety response and understanding that so many of our fire calls now are EMT related health calls, just understanding how to strategically plan for that and being a leader around the country and talking with other chiefs, sharing best practices and setting up training programs again to welcome more diversity into our workforce and into those careers. So thank you, Chief, for all of your leadership in our city, especially um, your dedication to our young people and your mentorship and guidance of so many in our city. Agreed. Any further discussion? Seeing none, uh, clerk uh, will call the roll. Council Member Gordon. Aye. Council Member Johnson. Aye. Council Vice President Jenkins. Aye. Council President Bender. Aye. Mayor Fry. Aye. There are five ayes. That carries and that item is approved. The next item is an update from HR from Human Resources Department regarding waivers granted since the implementation of the city's hiring freeze. And I'll ask uh, Human Resources to present that report. I thank you, Mayor Fry, distinguished council members. My name is Deb Kruger. I am a human resources manager, a facilitator and administrator of the hiring freeze waiver process. Um, I did submit two documents um, to today's meeting. One is a, a, a quick report, um, and then I also have a, um, a more um, full explanation of each waiver that has been approved and or denied to go over the uh, report very quickly. Um, some background on March 31st uh, of this year, Mayor Fry did implement um, the hiring freeze as a cost containment measure during the local public health emergency declaration. At that time that the um, hiring freeze was implemented on March 31st, there were, uh, there were exactly 100 active hiring processes um, in flight. Um, at that time, uh, we established a, a review committee made up of, well, there were two, uh, made up of an internal group that did some of the legwork and facilitation and getting information from departments. Uh, and then a staff committee made up of three department heads within the city uh, who made a recommendation to uh, Mayor Fry, who then made the final decision on whether, uh, based on those recommendations on whether to approve or deny those um, hiring freeze waiver requests. And then on May 1st, 2020, City Council took action and adopted a resolution for the to continue that employment hiring freeze for all city departments and that exemptions would continue um, for critical positions and requiring the administrative um, approval from that staff committee made up of um, Chief Human Resource Officer Patience Ferguson, uh, Interim Chief Financial Officer Lori Johnson and City Coordinator Mark Ruff. And those recommendations again forwarded to a uh, for review and final decision from Mayor Fry, in addition to Council President Bender. And then the hiring freeze resolution as adopted by City Council on May 1st requires a presentation and report on those waivers and exemptions at each executive committee meeting. So today's report is the first report out of the hiring freeze exemption and it covers the time period from March 31st to May 20, 28th. That would be all hiring waivers that have gone through the full process with final decisions made. There are approximately another 10 that are in the pipeline in progress. Uh, and again, Council President Bender began um, doing the review of those waivers effective May 1st, so not since the beginning of, um, on, on March 31st. Uh, a high level overview, overview within that time frame, March 31st to May 28th, we have had 48 waivers completed. 
Of those 48 hiring waivers, 34 have been approved for the number of positions that the department was requesting. Four have been partially approved where the department was requesting multiple um, uh, positions and, and only a portion of them were approved and 10 have been denied. And then there is um, a, a department breakdown. Um, about 60% of the city departments have requested exemptions to the hiring freeze. You will see the, the names of the departments that have requested those. The next column over shows the total number of waivers that the department had submitted in the time frame up through May 28th. And then out of those total number of waivers, how many have been approved and how many have been denied? I'm sorry, is that document available? Or slides, or, or, are we able to see those? Council Vice President, this is Casey. The document she's referring to is included on the published executive committee agenda as a report. I will include that in the chat so you can access it more easily. Mr. Carl, I can also share my screen if you'd like. That's fine if you have that ability. You bet. Uh, I believe I do. I am sharing my screen with the uh, with the hiring waiver report. Is it available? Ms. Kruger, um, you, you're, I'm hearing from the technical team, you cannot share your screen because you're not a producer in the team's live broadcast. Okay. So again, I'll just repeat, I've added the link uh, for council members. It was published for the public and is available from the agenda that's available on the city website. Thank you, Mr. Clark. I think you could probably proceed, Ms. Kruger. OK, uh, so unless you have any questions, I may be, be more than willing and happy to answer any questions that you have on the report. Otherwise, there was a second document that was provided um, uh, with a complete breakdown uh, with more detail on the hiring waivers um, for each department, the job title, um, the funding source, um, and which, which ones have been approved and which ones had been denied. Um, at the at the end of that Excel spreadsheet report, um, kind of a, uh, in general, I would say most, uh, probably 60% of the positions that have been approved um, were from general funds. The rest were a mix of, you know, enterprise funds, uh, revenue funds, grant funds. Uh, of those waivers, 48 waivers, 62 approvals were for permanent FTEs at the city. There were 158 seasonal or temporary FTEs that were approved, um, the majority of them being um, either in the city clerk's office for the seasonal election staff and in public works for their seasonal staff um, that supplement their permanent staff for capital construction projects um, through from the summer uh, through the end of the year. 45 are paid student interns and 2,800 were um, for election judges. Thank you, Ms. Kruger. Uh, any questions? I have a, I guess I have a question, if I may. Council Member Gordon. Uh, and apparently I'm having, the chat isn't taking my, um, messages that I'm sending, so I apologize for that. Um, I, are there, um, were there some waivers that were approved prior to this report that aren't on here? Uh, Council Member Gordon, there was one um, before the decision was made that uh, Mayor Fry would be included in the um, decision making process. There was one um, the very first day of the waiver process, and it was for police sergeant, which they've actually put on hold and they're not uh, completing those hires at this time. So I'm going through the reports and there's one that's listed on uh, not the one pager, but in the 
deeper document from the police that has to do with police recruit and it says 36 permanent hires and then it says that it was approved but i don't see that coming up on the one pager at all do you um do you know what i'm referring to council member gordon i do uh the one in the police department was uh, that's on the short report the word document that one approval is for the police recruit so the, it looks like it's for one all right one, so I'm it, sorry, it's just one waiver one waiver for 36 people that is correct so the report it just looks a little bit um it's hard to see that and understand so that report actually all those requests for waivers then that could actually be for 36 or 50 or 100 different employees but it's we're only listing it as one council member that, that is correct um i mean we can certainly I, think change the report out. I think part of the reason is because it's a recruiting class it was, it's 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 uncertain as to how many it would be well it uh, does say 36 so i would um I think it's great that we have the number of waivers listed, number approved, uh, partial approvals and denied. Um, however, it's not as transparent and useful as it might be, because when I'm looking at it at first, I'm thinking, oh, out of, um, you know, employees, there were 48 job postings that people wanted a waiver for, and 34 got hired out of those 48. But when I discover one one of those numbers could be 36. It doesn't give me a lot of good information to understand actually how effective our, our um, hiring freeze has been or hasn't been. Um, maybe it'll work out to about 60% of the individuals who you know we wanted to have waivers for got hired or 70% or whatever. Already it looks like requests are being granted pretty easily. Um, so if we could get I mean, it might be more useful to actually have a report about the number of individuals who got hired and how much money um, is associated with those hires somehow. So we have a better understanding. The whole purpose be behind the hiring freeze was to save money. And so we're going to think if one waiver went through, well, that wasn't too expensive. But if it's actually representing 36 employees who may be an ongoing cost, that's pretty significant. So I'm not sure if that's really hard to put together and I do understand you provided a great bit of background information so it's there somewhere although I'm not sure if we have the total cost because it just says how many were hired and how many were approved and I think we're going to be very interested in seeing if we can um, hold down the expenses too so that would certainly make a difference depending on how much we're paying and how much it's costing to make these hires. So that's just some input here, and thanks for clarifying about the police and the cadet class. Yeah, Councilmember uh, Gordon, I think that's a. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, uh, no I, I, I too was going. Uh, sorry, Mr. Mr. Mayor and Council Member Gordon, um, I, we can certainly add that information um, into the waiver report itself, rather than the detailed documentation um, as supporting documents. We certainly can add in the number of positions, and we do have costs. Thank, Thank you. you very uh, much. Just to add on briefly to council members, Gordon's suggestion while we're on the topic, and I think it's, his suggestion is a good one. The other um, figure that we haven't delved into is the numbers that have not been brought forward because the instruction to staff was to not even bring a potential hire through the waiver process unless it's absolutely essential. Um, and so I don't know how easy it is to get the numbers that didn't even come to the approval process to begin with, but certainly that would add to the total cost savings. Um, Council President Bender. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I did want to note, and I think staff did as well, that the more detailed report that includes all of those numbers is also listed in the LIM system for the public and for council members. So I, I agree that I think adding some of that detail to this one page um, overview sheet would be helpful, all, but all of those details are also available in the same link, just a different document, one more down. 
um, both for the public and, and any of our colleagues and council members. And I did want to note, actually, since Councilmember used it, at, Gordon used it as an example, the police recruit class is one where before I um, submitted my own approval, I checked in with a number of colleagues mindful of quorum, including Councilmember Gordon, um, to make sure that folks didn't have any particular questions or concerns. Um, this is one where during the budget process, we had a very significant and lengthy conversation. Um, it was part of an agreement made by a number of policymakers and an attempt to reduce the amount was failed um, significantly. I, I voted, I, I authored that change, um, I think along with Councilmember Gordon and Ellison, um, but it did not have support. So I just wanted to note that one um, because we've been talking about the police department's budget so much. This was uh, approved before the most recent conversations and before George Floyd's death, but also was top of mind for me in checking in with my colleagues. Um, but because the council had so definitively made that decision to invest in a recruit class, um, and not hearing particularly concerns from my colleagues about moving forward with it, I did um, approve that item as is noted in the in the documentation. Thank you, Council President. Council Vice President. Thank you, Mayor Fry. I, you know, I think my comments may be a little redundant. It's, it's just supporting um, Council Member Gordon's um, um, comments and, and requests. Um, and I mean, I think very similar, the clerk's um, waivers, you know, it, on the report, it says seven, seven requests and one denied, but it's actually resulting in the hiring of 250 people. Was Is that the correct number or is it more than that? Council Vice President, I, I can answer that. It's significantly more than that. It's 2,500. 2,500, that's, just, that's what I thought, yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, you know, it's listed as six, six approved requests, but it's 2,500 people. So, I mean, and yeah, I get it that it's in another document and, it's buried in our limb systems, but I'm I'm not sure the public is always able to to um, to access that or willing to go that deep, given all of the um, sort of you know rumors and and sort of you know kind of half statements that happen in our community. It's really I think important and incumbent on us to be as transparent as we possibly can. Um, so just echoing um, Council Member Gordon's uh, concerns. Thank you, Council Vice President. Yeah, I agree. We should be as transparent as possible with this. Um, any uh, further questions or comments? Uh, seeing none. I don't believe this requires a roll call, and so I'll just direct the clerk to file that report. Uh, with that, we have we've concluded the discussion items on our agenda, and we have two potential closed session items on our agenda today uh, regarding a collective bargaining agreement with IBW electricians and preliminary considerations of allegations regarding CPET director. I'll ask the city attorney um, to explain why the meeting may be closed. Uh, thank you, Mayor Fry. So this next item, the third item in the agenda, is consideration of strategy for labor negotiations involving IBEW electricians unit. Consideration or discussion and review of labor negotiation proposals may be held in a closed session pursuant to MinStat section 13D.03. In order to close the meeting to the public, a majority of this committee must vote to close this meeting. In deciding whether to close for discussion of labor negotiation strategy, the committee should weigh the right of the public to know what its government is doing against the need of the city to reserve the confidentiality of its labor negotiation strategy and discussions. 
I'll move that the meeting be closed pursuant to the open meeting law, Minnesota statute section 13D.03 to discuss labor negotiation strategies involving IBW electricians, in addition to Minnesota statute section 13D.05 subdivision 2B to give preliminary consideration to allegations regarding director of CPED. Uh, is there any yeah, discussion? Mayor, I'll just note, um, since I didn't uh, address the, the third and fourth item, I, I, I was, um, uh, wasn't clear that we would do both, but yes, you're correct. The uh, fourth item, which is um, consideration of pre preliminary consideration of allegations regarding the director of CPED, Mr. David Frank, the open meeting law actually requires that that meeting be closed. There is no discretion, and that is minced at 13D.05 subdivision 2B, uh, because Mr. Frank is subject to the um, uh, the authority of the executive committee. Um, however, that, that closure should also still occur uh, via motion. Thank you. So I believe I have made the motion uh, for those items. Is there any discussion on the motion to close? Seeing none, I'll ask the clerk to call the roll. Council Member Gordon. Aye. Council Member Johnson. Aye. Council Vice President Jenkins. Aye. Council President Bender. Aye. Mayor Fry. Aye. There are five ayes. That motion passes and we will proceed to the closed session. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, technical question, do we com do we completely log out of this meeting? Council Vice President, you will need to log out of this meeting and you'll need to log into the meeting called closed session number three, for which you should have an invite, and that will be the closed session. So if everyone can log out of this meeting and log into that separate meeting, that'll be our closed session. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Jacob Fry and I'm the chair of this executive committee. We have just concluded our closed sessions and we will reconvene this meeting of June 17th and I'll ask the clerk to call the roll so that we can verify a quorum is present. Council Member Johnson. Here. Council Member Gordon. Here. Council Vice President Jenkins. Here. Council President Bender. Here. Mayor Fry. Here. There are five members present. Let the record reflect that we do, in fact, have a quorum. The first item, which is item number three, is regarding the collective bargaining agreement with IBEW. Uh, Councilmember Gordon. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would like to make a motion um, not to ratify the uh, collective bargaining agreement, um, and I'd like to speak to that briefly. Please. Um, I think that um, where I'm not prepared to um, ratify this at this point, partly because um, of the w wage freeze that we instituted, and I, do I don't believe that this agreement is consistent with that. Um, and so I think we'll need to go um, back and um, work on it a little bit more and see what we can do about it. Um, and I did have one question um, that I want to get clarity on. I don't need to refer this to the city council because uh, it, we're not recommending it. It will just stay um, off the council's list. Is that correct, city clerk? Can you just answer out loud? Yes, Mr. Gord, uh, council member Gordon, you are correct. Thank you very much. Any further discussion on this motion from council member Gordon? Seeing none, uh, Councilmember Johnson. Aye. Councilmember Gordon. Aye. Council Vice President Jenkins. Aye. Council President Bender. Aye. Mayor Fry. Aye. There are five ayes. This motion passes. Uh, item number four is the pre preliminary considerations of allegations against the director of CPED. Uh, and I will go ahead and move that upon uh, a preliminary consideration of the allegations presented, discipline may be warranted 
and a hearing shall be scheduled for the next schedule, next regular meeting of the Executive Committee on Tuesday, June 13th, 2020. Any discussion? Mr. Mayor, to clarify, the next meeting is June 30th. I'm sorry, not the 13th. My apologies, June 30th, 2020. Any further discussion on that item? Uh, clerk can call the roll. Council Member Johnson. Aye. Council Member Gordon. Aye. Council Vice President Jenkins. Aye. Council President Bender. Aye. Mayor Fry. Aye. There are five ayes. That item passes and Mr. Clerk, I don't believe there's any further uh, any further items before us. I have no further business, Mr. Mayor. Okay. With no further business to come before us and without objection, I'll declare this meeting adjourned. Thank you.